We're going to be having a wonderful time and sharing some experiences with the one and only Archbishop Margaret Benton Idahosa for her 77th birthday. There is an aspect I need to tell you or reiterate to you about my about the day we got uh, wedded, so that the new ladies now, our girls now, will not say until I have this, until I have that, until I have that before I get I, I, I will get married. The day we got married, my husband didn't have a car. We only had a motorcycle. Yamaha, Yamaha uh, 200, that was what we had. The day we got married, we borrowed our car. Our car took us to church and brought us back to the reception. Before the reception was over, the owner of the car told my husband that he had a place to go, <laughs> so he took the car. Then, we did our reception in the in, in the frontage of uh, one of the in-laws house so the in-law was coming back from lagos and he told the wife listen i don't want to meet any crowd at my front house so we hurried things over and when we were, it was time for us to go home there was no car i had to tiptoe my husband had to carry my veil and we had about eight houses before we got to our house. My husband carried my veil. We both walked or tread to the house. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to tell our young ladies that it's not everything you must have. If I want a limousine, to take me to church now is at the beckon of my finger. I will get it. But then there was none. But you see, don't allow your posi the position that you are in now to dictate your future. Because your future is bright. Your future is great. Your future is powerful. So don't let what you have now disturb you at all. My husband said before he left, he said, where you are coming from is your hind. It's behind you. There's nothing to write home about when you are coming. But where you, where you are now, you are not perturbed because you know where you are going. So ladies, I know where you are going. I know because I am a woman of God. I can pray you to where you are going. And also believe God. Believe God for yourself as Sarah believed God for herself. When you believe God, you become what you believe. So I just want uh, her to know that it was not roses everywhere. No, 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 no. But look at us today. Before my husband left, anything I liked. We got married. It was panda. The, I don't know whether you know what is called panda. You may, you may not know. The one you use brazo to clean and clean and clean. Oh, and before 10 minutes is black again. That was what I used in getting married. These are all diamonds. Mm. My children gave this to me when I was 60. 60. Yeah, I remember that. And this one was bought for me. It's all here. Diamond. I mean, I didn't use the diamond to get married. Brazo, you clean and clean and clean and clean. And five or ten minutes later, it has turned black. So I beg you in the name of God, if you love your husband, if your husband is a man of God, if your husband has something to do in church, if your husband has a job, I beg you, two of you join your hands together and believe God for a better future because I know you have a better future future. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I just wanted to just put that Thank in. Thank you for that. I think that'll go a long way to easing the tension in some of the young men. 
I can hear them applauding you right now. <laughs> so we're talking. Okay, I want to I want to change direction a little bit because you are a woman of so much influence. Um, you have so much on your shoulders, as 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 they say. You are the president of several organizations that are doing very very well and have expanded since the departure of your husband. I want you to, to maybe take us through a little bit of your decision making. Um, process because I know you make tough decisions every day that affect thousands and thousands of people and sometimes that's a little harder than on other days. So for the other for the women that are out there, for the women and men that are out there that are in those such um, positions like that, how do you make your decisions? How do you, you, you make that decision that changes the lives of many people or a difficult decision that may may require you letting go of something or letting go of some people or how does that work for you? What, what, what is your process? My dear, if we are to talk about that, that will take me about three days or, or, or more. But I'm just going to say a little bit. Number one, when my husband passed, I never thought uh, he was, uh, it, it was possible for him to just die just like that. But when he passed, it was as if, my whole world was crumbled or has crumbled because everything I have or I owe, my husband vertically bought them for me. And I said, how can I ma manage? It was just, and I had to keep praying, crying and praying, but God did not answer me because you know, God is not moved by tears. He is only moved by faith. And when I clean my eyes and I say, God, I'm sorry that I'm praying, I'm crying, I don't know what you want to do, but I want you to let me know what I am doing here and what I'm going to do and what, how would people take me as, because I believe we, we live in a mass war, but that one is changed now. But I'm glad. And I, and I went into prayer and I prayed. And God spoke to me and said, Margaret, if I make the appointment, I will make sure that you function in the things I have ordained for you to do. And I said, okay, God, that is fine with me. And uh, when, he, uh, when I came back from America, after I was put as the presiding bishop, the first thing I did was to call all our bishops together. And one of them got up and said, give us a deputy. And I said, I cannot give you a deputy now. I don't want to start with mistake. Mm -hmm. I said, give me two weeks and let me talk to God. You know, I'm saying this because of what you said about me making decisions mm -hmm. that are same thing. Mm -hmm. I said, please give me two weeks. Anytime God speaks to me, I will come and I will tell you. So they said, okay, no problem. So I traveled, tra traveled to the state and I was in the hotel all by myself. I mean, I just lost my childhood husband. I was money and responsibility was put on me and I had to make decisions. And I told God and I said, God, the first, first week, nothing happened. The second week, a day to make it second week, I was just in the bathroom. I was just showering. And I heard the voice of God. I said, Margaret, make everyone your deputy. Wow! I screamed in, in the bathroom. Immediately, I just cleaned myself, came, came out of the bathroom, quickly put them put it down so that I will not forget. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was the first decision that I made. So as soon as I came, I called everybody and I said, God has spoken, God has spoken. 
and they said what the gospel and I said this is what God said about making or, or, or choosing a deputy the bishop in Abba excuse me the bishop in Abba you are my deputy in Abba right. the bishop in Lagos you are my deputy in Lagos the bishop in Abba you are my deputy and everybody was shocked. I was shocked myself because I never expected it. And that was what we did. Thanks be unto God for God that speaks to his children. You know, he spoke. And then the decision making. Oh, what God is doing now in the ministry. God gave me men and women. God gave me bishops, pastors that are called by God. And as I told them, you are deputy, deputy wherever you are, they took it. And that was what they did. And that is where we are now. So I do not have problem in decision making. When we want to make a decision, I call all of them. The Bible says two heads are better than one. And we just sit down, this, 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 this that is happening, what do we do? Immediately, people start to talk and then we put all together. And, and, and the decision is made. So that is uh, how we have been working together. I've said that to say that God gave me men, men of the same vision, men of the same purpose, men that God has called to making sure that Church of God Mission International goes or moves forward. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm getting from that is that you um, take your time Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, you take your time to make the decision and then you spend a lot of time in prayer as well and just wait for, for God to give you that answer. That's it, my darling, yeah. that's it. Well, one of the things I really love about you um, and what I, one of the things I've, I've gleaned from you over the years is your approach to forgiveness. And I know you say this all the time, you always say, I can't go to hell for anybody. Oh, you know and, it, you know it. <laughs> and it's something that I've always, um, even from a distance, I've, I've observed you, even when I'm upset at people, but one thing that they may have said or done that you, you might have heard over the years or might have come out over the years, you always seem to be always ready to embrace, even when they come to you and they, oh, they just, they kneel or whatever, or they... Um, apologize and they're crying and all that and I for the life of me I don't know how you do it but you're always your arms are always open for for that ready to reconcile and ready to how does that happen and how how have you managed to do that in a man's world and living um, in this type of environment where you have so much at stake and then you know things are happening and people are not always who they say they, they are and at the level that we're talking about when we're talking about you and leadership it's 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 really high stakes but yet you've held your heart in a, in a very open way a very soft way i want you to tell us a little bit about that how, how does that happen with you and maybe you can tell us exactly how to do that as well for, for those of us who are still coming up thank you very much for that number one as i have always said just what you said just now i have come too far to go back or to go to hell I will not open my eyes to go to hell. And no one will drag me to hell because of unforgiveness. When I uh, became what I am now, I made a decision. And it is a choice. You know, every choice you make in life determines how far you will go in whatever you do, whether it's your home, your marriage, your business, your job, your career, your bringing the children up, 
It's a choice. You have to make a choice to be better or to make it better for the future. So I told myself, my husband was just 60 before he died. I would have loved for him to live 120 years, but he died. And because he died, I sat down within myself and I was thinking, why holding on grudge when tomorrow you don't know when you will die? And when you die, the Bible says, unforgiveness will take you to hell and not only that it will not make your prayers to be answered the bible says forgive me father as i forgive those that trespass against me and if i don't forgive those that trespass against me god in heaven will not forgive me but i will want god to forgive me every time i pray and i will want god to answer my prayer every time i pray and and so because of that and i said nothing will hold me back nothing will make me not to forgive anybody even if you have offended me and you refuse to apologize i i i mean i still go out for you it is your choice whether you are to answer me or not that is not my business. I've, I've seen many, many people, they have come, oh, we want to apologize for what we said, for what we did, for that and for that. Say, my dear, I'm not aware. You don't remember I'm it. not <laughs> aware that you that, did that it. That has always baffled me. Uh, that half the time you don't even remember what they did to you. I, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids I mean, remember. You do, you do well, it, you don't you even do keep it. it to God. Yeah. Apologize to God. Say, God, uh, Forgive me. My dear, my heart is open. Free. My heart is free. People, people look at me and say, ah, ah, you still look young and beautiful as you are. I say, oh yes, I do. Number one, I have an office. The office I am in, I sit down, I work from morning till evening. And the one I can't finish, I don't bring it home. I leave it there. I come home free. Tomorrow I will start it. You know, one thing always occurred to me. My husband has started this job. He died. Mm -hmm. The work is still going it's on. Still going the work is not dead. And I'm not going to finish the whole thing. I can't win the whole world. That is why he has passed us everywhere. So the, the one I'm able to do, I do it. And I leave it there. I come home, I take a shower, eat, I mean, I, I, I sleep, and, and that's it. And it has given me joy on the inside of me, because I can't be doing the work of God mad. I can't be doing the work of God, work of God, uh, 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 being sorrow, sorrowful on the inside. No, 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 I'm not wired like that. I'm wired to be happy all, all the time. And I said, God, I'm not going to allow anybody because of the offense for me to keep it, hold it in me. No, 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 no. If you have offended me, I just say it to you. And if you, if you like, you take it. If you don't like, you, 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 I mean, it's your choice. And I made my choice. And choice. so, as far as forgiveness is concerned, Matthew 18 said, if you don't forgive your brother, you are putting a dagger on his throat. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be a murderer. Mm -hmm. It's not only when you carry a, a, a dagger or a cutlass, you cut people. You can destroy people with your words. You can destroy people with your action. You can relegate them to a corner with whatever you have. It's not only when you, when, when you hold cutlass to kill. And the Bible says, no mother shall inherit the kingdom of God. I want to inherit the kingdom of God. That is why I forgive. Amen. 
that is why I forgive those that trespass or that uh, offend. It doesn't take a thing to, to, to forgive, you know, it's just a question of the heart. When your heart is for God, uh, you know where you are going. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven by His grace. All right. My sister Ladona Osborne now called me and said, Margaret, Dad is gone. Ah, I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. I thought she met her father, T.L. Osborne. I said, oh, okay. Uh, my sister has gone to work now. I will give her a call to book me a ticket. And maybe I will come there in the night. She said, oh, Margaret, I'm not talking of T.L. I'm talking of Archbishop Benson in the house. I said, what?